as you know that the Kaiban Networks this process also can provide you know cross-chain asset transaction stuff but only asset transaction not about computer resources or any type of other transaction style and when you look at the synthetics it's kind of same approach here too because synthetics provide a virtual wrapping technology and with this wrapping technology user only can transact the price not the actual assets on each cross-platform stuff right it's also kind of another alternative solutions which also Polkadot and Cosmos can think of it too, okay? Hi, I'm Mr. Masa. Today's investment review for the Polkadot token called is DOT. Dot. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, this is my proposed strategy. So I only allocate my assets to the Bitcoin and the older altcoin which is related to these six categories. If you wanna deepen your understanding about my proposed strategy, please check out my other video about my proposed strategy, okay? And it leads the polka dots is categorized here. Number six, blockchain interoperability, okay? As usual, I'm gonna apply the six anagram points. So starting from the pain points, products, team, execution power, token economy and hype cycle and for each I set the 5.0 so the total score is 30 points 3-0 okay and then let's start from the number one pain point analysis and about the blockchain interoperability layer we have many two pain points and the first one is this one blockchain is isolated each other let me explain why each blockchain platform such as Bitcoin or Ethereum, Binance, EOS Tron, you know, each platform their own blockchain, and then there is no way to communicate each other at this moment. Because you know, blockchain technology itself is kind of closed technology, that is why. And then because of this, we're gonna experience this kind of serious issue about those kind of communication between one blockchain to the other blockchain. And then one of the typical examples is actually this one: NFT on game dApps on cross platform. You might know the How Do You Movie, this one, Ready Player One. This is also my favorite, you know, How Do You Movie. And inside the game, it's amazing world, like Oasis gaming world. Just like a universe, you know, each store have their each gaming zone. And you can carry your favorite gaming character for the each, you know, gaming zone in a completely free way. All, you know, gaming zone is connected to each other. But once I apply this idea into the blockchain space, it's technically impossible. Let me tell you the example here. So for example, like there is a three major bros project here, Ethereum, Tron, EOS, and then each game A on Ethereum, and a game B on Tron, and a game C on EOS. Then here is you know NFT virtual item here, such as you know AX, for example, it's Gundam, and a BY is Akira's bike, and a CZ is Pikachu. With this our current blockchain technology, you cannot carry this Gundam to game B on a truck. That is why this technical issue should be solved by blockchain interoperability. Okay? The second pain point. So it's technically a tough challenge for bros to support massive active user base dApps. Okay? And then one of the good examples is this one, CryptoKitties. Actually, because of the crypto kitties, you know, Ethereum causes network congestions. Let me tell you the background. In the crypto kitties, you can, you know, take some kind of these, you know, cute kitties, and you can grow up inside a game, and you can trade to other crypto kitties or, you know, buy, you know, crypto assets with the trading stuff. So just like, you know, Pokemon gaming style. And then they're gonna hit a huge popularity, you know, with this game. Because of that, a lot of you know miner in you know, Ethereum all the time spend their time to only process you know crypto kitties transactions, and because of that, they're gonna occur the huge delay of the transaction process in other DApps except crypto kitties, because you know Ethereum platform running you know competition model you know inside in you know, a game mechanism stuff, so once crypto kitty can pay a lot more money for the you know, transaction process. All the miner try to process you know, these transactions and they're gonna ignore other DApps transaction stuff. 
which we call network congestions. And uh, since you know bronze technology itself still no, not matured enough yet at this moment. So from this perspective, once we're gonna have massive and popular application on each bronze project again and again, network congestion problem will occur over and over again. That's not what we want. So this is another technical issue that blockchain interpreted software try to solve. Okay. And based on this understanding, let's move to the next topic, product analysis. So this is a kind of technical overview of the products. Three key components of the software solutions. First one is this one, relay chain. Means it's a central chain of the product network. All the body data of the product are stake on the relay chain. So it's kind of central hub of the you know, decentralized blockchain platform here. And the second one is parallel chain here. So the parallel chain are the parallel chain that connects to the relay chain and are maintained by the their validator called creators. So the pro chain is kind of sub chain of the relay chain and they're going to maintain this decentralized hub network of the relay chain itself. Okay. And the third one is this one, bridge chain. So the bridge are the special blockchain that allow pro chain to connect with and communicate with external network like Ethereum and Bitcoin. This is kind of key technology of the you know, pro products because, you know, Major concept of the blockchain interoperability is you know, how they're gonna effectively and efficiently communicate with the one blockchain platform to the other blockchain platform, right? So these are the three major key you know, technical components of the product software, okay? Then as usual, broker proportion analysis. So the product here and the major competitor Cosmos here. And I also bring the DEX player here such as Kaiba Network and Synthetix because they're gonna take in care of some of the use case you know, which blockchain integrity software can take in care of it. And one of the good examples is, you know, this one, Uniswap asset trade on cross chain. As you know that the Kaiba Networks this process also can provide, you know, cross chain asset transaction stuff, but only asset transaction, not about computer resources or any type of other transaction style. And when you look at the Synthetix, it's kind of same approach here too, because Synthetix provide a virtual wrapping technology and with this wrapping technology, user only can transact the price, not the actual assets on each cross platform stuff, right? It's also kind of another alternative solutions, which also Polkadot and Cosmos can take of it too, okay? And then staking services with the proof of stake model is another like, you know, major feature of the, you know, blockchain interpreted software. And then, but also Dex player also provides this feature too. Once you're gonna delegate your candidacy token inside the Kaiba Network platform, market maker inside the you know, Kaiba Network platform borrow your candidacy and provide market liquidity inside, they're gonna share some of the revenue to your accounts. And because of that, you can make money. Just like you know, deposit your you know, money into the bank accounts. Okay? These DEX player also provide these issues too. So kind of you know, similar competitions are happening here too. Okay? In other use cases, actually, the DEX player cannot provide. And one of the typical areas is this one. The security resource sharing and a real-time update on cross-chain. Security resource sharing is kind of critical advantage for the Polkadot because Polkadot aggregated the computer resources inside. One blockchain project wants to build their own blockchain network. And in its initial stage, their secure network itself is kind of weak, only few validator, that is why, okay? So from this perspective, if you know, those blockchain player can borrow some of the computing resources inside of Polkadot network, it's extremely helpful to develop their own blockchain you know, in long term, right? So from this perspective, this is a quite beneficial advantage for the Polkadot. And the second one is a real-time update on cross-chain too. Of course, about asset transactions, the exposure can take care of it, about the real update stuff, but only asset, not about any other type of the transactions. Let's say about you know, sending message or processing some kind of storage data update or something, these DEX player cannot support them. Okay? Instead, Polkadot can take care of this issue too, so that's the advantage, right? About, you know, these, you know, two advantage stuff. Let me explain more detail why here. Differences kind of Cosmos have. So here's the Cosmos have, 
and each blockchain player here, such as Ethereum, Bitcoin, Tron, EOS, Binance, you know. And uh, through Cosmos Hub, each blockchain player can communicate each other like this way. Not only about asset transaction stuff, but also they can you know, share any type of the information to one blockchain player to the other blockchain player. This is also very convenient and effective too. Think about you know, computing resource sharing model. Some of the new player, let's say Binance, wants to build their own validator network on their own blockchain. But since you know, they are still early stage on the blockchain platform player, so it's kind of quite tough work for them to protect their own network in a decentralized model. But by using so-called bonding technology with the you know, interoperability software such as Cosmos and Polkadot, Binance can borrow some of the computer resources of the Ethereum or EOS on Tron. Then they can maintain their secured blockchain network with this model. This is very, very helpful to build a more sustainable and a more diversified, you know, distributed computing network on their own on Binance, right? This is great technical advantage of the blockchain interoperability software compared with Dex project, okay? And then think about the those like necessity of this type of technology. One of my the production that I'm thinking about is this one. Local bats will accelerate the need for the blockchain interoperability. Such as Tomo Chain, it's kind of a good example of the local boards because all the founding members from Vietnam, they focus on the Vietnam market. All the computing resources, these local boards coming from local player and also the DApps use case also focus on local use case, such as local Uber or local Airbnb or something. Okay? Aaron also the same thing still. They focus on the North European market. Okay? Then when you look at the you know, other second layer players such as Engine Coin, they are building a gaming community on top of the Ethereum. So it's kind of virtual community, right? And then, then, then also, you know, try to connect a you know, smartphone user, you know, connect or communicate to each other with eSIM transaction services stuff. These are the kind of virtual community player on the blockchain space. And then once, you know, each player try to build their own blockchain platform, they need to communicate each other in some use cases. And for example, like a Dendro user wants to travel to Vietnam, they want to access the you know, Tomo chains in the local apps or something. And in this case, we need the blockchain interpretive software solution here, right? So more and more, you know, variety of the blockchain platform player is coming up to the market. Blockchain interpretive solution will be, you know, facing a critical demand on the market. So it's kind of quite positive network effects for them. Okay. And then number three, team analysis. So I think these are the five key members of the you know, Polkadot project. And the one of the things I need to mention here is the party technology is kind of mother you know, organization body of the Polkadots. And then these whole five member is work for party technology. Okay? And then Gabby Woods, founder and real developer, he's a co-founder and XCT of the Ethereum, as we know and a PhD of the music visualization of the human computer interface at the York University. So that is why, you know, the Gavin Wood deeply knows about the platform development through the experience of the, you know, Ethereum. Okay? So great serial entrepreneur for this project. And then Jadder, the founder and the CEO, he's an ex-associate of McKinsey and a PhD of the mathematics at the University of Bonn. She's kind of very smart talent. And Frederick, the CTO, he's an ex-CTO of the British Labs kind of you know, tech startups out. And also he got the master degree of the engineering physics at the faculty engineering at the London University. And Eric, ecosystem development lead, he's a co-founder of Alcon, the decentralized fire stretch like BitTrend. And also he's a PUC with a partner at the Vika Capital, the blockchain you know, startup investment capital. And also he passed from the PhD of the chemistry at the Stanford University. So it's a very smart guy and a great execution power. And Peter is the head of the public affair. He's an ex-principal at the Kibit, you know, PR strategy consulting, you know, companies. So very professional team. This is great. Okay. And execution power analysis. And then this is the overview of the Procodo ecosystem as of November 2019. And here is, you know, subtraded base player, one of the key, you know, ecosystem player inside here, and a wallet player, explorer player tooling player, validator network here, and the full and the infrastructure. So 
actually the polka dot is kind of later player compared with cosmos but the great tractions here their basic strategy for this ecosystem development is you know web3 foundation grant model here so they already founded the web3 foundation about the blockchain integrity solutions you know market development stuff since gavin woods has a lot of money with the success of the ethereum so he put a lot of personal assets in this you know project they kind of donated you know each blockchain project you know related to these you know categories which is related to this ecosystem development stuff so cosmos is actually taking completely same approach with this model but since you know the capital size on polkadot is much bigger than cosmos currently the polkadot is overwhelming traction of the blockchain interpreted software layer you know in these competitions okay and then number five token economy analysis so token economy design metrics which i made and then blockchain interoperability is categorized here so security economy and the governance is very critical and then let's start from security economy since polkadot has not opened their data yet so for reference let's use the data of the cosmos and the first thing i want to tell you is you know dpos delegate proof of stake model is a most sustainable DAO mechanism for the blockchain platform player as of now because you know bitcoin applied a proof of work model you know which fully run a competing power that is why you know all the time you know they're going to face an increasing transaction cost and if it's not so fully sustainable but the dpos model since it depends on how much token that each user on with the right mindset is kind of critical elements about the decentralized governance model so we can expect much more lower transaction cost. But key issue about the DPoS model is, you know, about the staking ratio. Since over 66.6% is a minimum requirement about right consensus to maintain the platform. So this staking ratio is a very important factor. Currently, Cosmos achieved over 73.4% over over 67 percent so this is great achievement and this achievement also very very critical for the protocol that's still okay you know dpos model every single user can join this in a governance model here how it's like this way so in a cosmos case once you're gonna buy the atom token and then through the exchange players such as binance or world players such as cosmos station you can delegate this token to the validator on the Cosmos network. And the validator is they're gonna run in some kind of decentralized selection process. So anyone cannot be a validator, but you know, some of the decentralized process, you know, some of the player can become the validator and they gonna maintain that in you know, a whole network of the cosmos. Same as protocol that's still. Okay. And in this process, validator need you know, enough stake to maintain the network. So this number is kind of critical. And the user's benefits for this derogation is actually this one, interest slides. So in an annual basis, once you're gonna delegate your tokens, you can get six to nine percent annual return. So this is kind of primary motivation of the derogation process still. And then once you're gonna achieve over 67%, since validator is kind of you know right player to maintain this network, so they can you know build this in ecosystem in a sustainable way. Okay. And then number six, hype cycle analysis. And then this is the Gartner hype cycle analysis, blockchain business 2019 version. And the blockchain interoperability is categorized here, blockchain. And then since it's kind of close to the real market adaptation happening here, so if you want to see some you know higher exponential growth of the you know Polkadot project, we have to find some item here. DAO mechanism, okay. Still, Polkadot has not opened the data about their staking you know, transaction yet. I'm going to see high expectation for them. You know, think about their you know, great team. So I think you know, Polkadot also taking care of you know, this DAO mechanism issue in quite a while too. Okay? So total variations. So about the pain points, I said the 4.0 here because blockchain integrity tried to solve the very you know, critical problem in this blockchain ecosystem. But as I told you that, you know, since when you look at the DEX players such as Kaiba Network and Synthetix, they also provide some alternative solution there. So we have to a little bit, you know, minus the point here. So I said 4.0, okay? 
And about the product, it's 4.0. You know, it's very well developed, but we have to take in care of the bonding issue about, you know, or DPOS and you know, staking model issue, which is the you know, left item here. So I set the 4.0 here. About a team, it's great. It's a very powerful, very experienced player inside. So I set the 5.0. About execution power, I'm gonna show about the clear example with the attractions. And then even there, the later player compared with Cosmos, you know, they're gonna have a great traction ecosystem development staff in the past, you know, one or two years. So I set the 5.0. And the token economy, this is also great because the DPoS model is one of the most sustainable DAO mechanism model in next, you know, five or 10 years or so. So I set the 5.0. And the hype cycle, I set the 4.0 here because, you know, the blockchain interoperability itself is close to the real market adaptations, but the DAO mechanism, you know, development staff is a little bit, you know, still under development right now. So I set the 4.0 here. So the total score is 27 point. And my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. So the product project itself is worth to invest. Okay. So that is all this time. I also make a lot of interesting videos about the crypto and the blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye.